Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Wow, hello there, look at that. Look at that, the Schumann resonance today. Look at the power numbers, 94, 93, 93. Mm -hmm. And as we've said many times, the primary thing going on here on the planet, of which everything else is really just an, well, it, it's a reaction to in so many ways or a byproduct of, is the ascension process, which is all about elevating consciousness, raising consciousness. And, you know, I've seen people that make comments like, I don't understand what you mean by raising consciousness uh, or raising vibrations or they just um, perhaps have never really given thought to the fact of how powerful our thoughts are, Th thoughts, well, according to some of the greatest minds we've ever had, such as Einstein, Planck, Tesla, I mean, there's nothing more real than thought. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is the fundamental nature of the universe, the multiverse of everything that is. Thoughts are absolutely things, and I would go even as far as to say they're like little beings. You know, they don't like to be forgotten. So a lot of people have this broken record in their head where they keep thinking the same thing over and over and over. And I tell clients when they have that problem, try writing it down on a notebook, because a lot of times these thoughts or little beings don't want to be forgotten. But as soon as they have a safe place to be and stay, the thoughts stop. Yeah, as we've said so many times, and we're going to look at some earth changes, um, you know, we are every single one of us is a universe unto ourselves with well, billions, if not trillions of lives that make up our life. Mm -hmm. And even when we look at like energy bodies, like Cindy and I are just maybe two inches apart. So most of the layers of our energy bodies are interpenetrating right now. Mm -hmm. So consciousness is like that. And we can affect amazing change. If only enough people understood this you know we could change the world literally overnight and that will happen at a critical point a critical juncture point in the awakening process of consciousness that's going on, on the planet when you see numbers like this and you know records being set it shows the earth is changing the earth is going up into a higher realm and so we either we have a choice you know we could ascend with the earth or, well, we might find ourselves being reborn on a different planet somewhere else at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we do have some quakes going on. We have three earthquakes, including a 4.7. This is over west of Lake Tahoe as this is reloading here. Actually, there's a swarm going on there right now, as you see the area. And we're going to go take a look at the USGS had this up for a while we've basically getting videos done in between um working on people so we could see there there's one that came off over here there were a couple of 3.1s showing in kansas and we do have one way up here in maine 1.8 but the swarm that we're going to look at is over here and let's see if we could get the big one in yeah, that's the 4.7. And there's quite a few uh, quakes coming up in this area. Now, this is northwest of where we've had a swarm for the longest time. Over here, This is the area west of Tonopah. Down, down here, you have Mammoth Lakes. And, of course, down here, uh, you have China Lake. And there's been swarms here, swarms here all along for over well over a year now, probably two years. Uh, but we have an interesting swarm going on over in this area and of course we know the uh canadian uh, cascadian i should say cascadia cascadian fall is basically overdue and we've had this long slow slip going on in the west coast as you see 31 uh quakes in the area that we're looking at so the, the earth is still showing signs of the changing times and this was another big story that, like everybody, when we checked our text messages this morning, it seems like everybody's talking about uh, the declining water levels, which we've talked about the drought in the West, the mega drought. We've talked about 
Dust Bowl two perhaps coming, uh, but what will this mean and the timing of it? You know, I forget whose video it was that, that our brother Joe sent us. A Jeff P. Oh, Jeff P. did an inter uh, a, a video talking about the timing's going to be bad, where you might actually have power outages because you're not going to be able to produce uh, power from here, as well as just the water shortages, but at peak time in the summer. And as I said to Cindy, I said, well, where we are here, it, it'll be uncomfortable without AC. You know, we could be in the 95 degree range without AC, but we have plenty of trees to get some shade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll have plenty of water here. Yeah, there's plenty of water here too, but facing uh, conditions in say Phoenix to Vegas in the peak of summer when you got temperatures 110 to 120, um, and you know, depending on where you're at, you may have some shade trees, but how long will they stay alive if you're not going to be able to water them? Right. Uh, it, that's scary. That's a real scary situation out there. Yeah, I mean, Vegas is huge. That huge concrete jungle and there's just so many people just stacked on top of each other and um i, I just don't see how this is going to work i mean jeff was saying about eight days we're looking at eight days possibly and then the the then, temperatures are going to be over 100 i think yeah and then there'll be a emergency declared we talked about that a few days back too it's it's coming um and then a painful painful water shortages you know it, you got all these people and we've, we've driven by them, you know, with these amazingly gorgeous lawns and, you know, so much money invested in plants and grass and all that. And if you're not allowed to water them because of restrictions, you're going to have uh, just so much loss going on. And then, of course, the loss of life and mm -hmm. the loss of life even to the, the critters that are out in the desert that are acclimated to the desert. But, you know, with that drying up and uh, of course all the uh artificial flavoring that we find in this world why so much water in one spot and not in another i'm going to make a video I, I just thought it'd be fun uh changing things from a biblical perspective uh rewording a few things into maybe some modern verbiage i think it'll be a interesting fun one controversial i'm sure mm -hmm. So we got zombie fires, mm, zombie fires over in Siberia. Siberia is on fire and it's only May. Mm. It's the permafrost that's on fire as well. Peat fire. Even with snow on top, it didn't go out. You know, 30 degrees below Celsius temps. There's major changes going on on this planet. In late April, Siberian Times reported 27 houses were destroyed and 50 in Russia's third largest city of Novosibirsk from wildfires and snow. This is bizarre, but this is what we have. There's a lot of volcanic activity going on, like we talked about, under the West Antarctic ice sheet, which is on land. You know, so we have so much going on. Got a question Question everything. England is on for its coldest May since record keeping began back in the Maunder Minimum, 1659. That's huge. 362 years records going down. 362. When we talked about, you know, how often do mud floods come about? Do, are they maybe every 400 years, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Snow chaos. Fin Finland's bracing for 12 inches of snow. You know, will we be seeing and talking about snow into June? Will we be talking about snow maybe the first week of September in some places? It's going to just get a little bit more extreme, if you can imagine that. Maybe a lot more extreme. Yeah. Whistleblowers accuse 22 climate papers of fraud. Oh, say it isn't. So, <laughs> they're making up data? I can't believe it. No, it can't be, can it? Yeah, you know, this is part of the great unveiling. And I do hear that uh, BG's wife is perhaps going to do some unveiling. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's an interesting thing, too. Covert NASA data reveals global snowfall has increased over the last 40 years. So there's that which is, and there's that which we get sold. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, the great unveiling, the apocalypse, 
we are definitely in apocalyptic times. As we've said, the emperor's got no clothes and we're going to realize it. Mm -hmm. And we do have another asteroid that went by, I think this one was the 56th, let's see, something like that. 54th. Okay, jumping the gun. This was the 54th since the start of the year. 2021 JS1 came by at less than a third of a lunar distance. And by the way, we also had a huge glowing fireball lighting up the sky over Japan. So there is a video here. I'll send it to put you guys the links as always. Lots of fireballs, lots of asteroids, close call. Lots of stuff up there, and not a lot of chicken. We have a U.S. chicken shortage since prices soaring and wings are flying off the shelves. Mm. Actually, uh, the prices, the price per pound on boneless breast actually doubled since last year. So this is um, causing. It's going to be some shortages. So you might go to KFC and they might say, "Well, we don't have any chicken, but we do have some catfish." Yep. You know, so Buffalo Wild Wings. How wild is it going to be without the wings in Buffalo? I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we know many people have been talking about what's coming. This perfectly. Think of a symphony. Mm -hmm. What, you know, what, who's the guy that leads the symphony? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you call them? Uh, oh, that, that guy that leads the He's like the a symphony. conductor. Conductor of an orchestra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little too perfect. Mm -hmm. Some viruses have completely different genome to the rest of life on Earth. And by the way, where they found this one, and this looks like something I was dreaming about last night, honestly. Um, it's really kind of that looks disconcerting because like I was dreaming of if you put it in reverse, O N A N coming out of people's skin and it did look a lot like that mm -hmm. it really did and this they say uh that they found on an asteroid i don't know maybe it came from mars maybe could have been totally different mm -hmm. totally different than what we see on earth that's uh, interesting anyway to say the least now of course there's a whole different line of thinking on viruses which many of you might get what I'm talking about and, and how they really affect things and what they really are. So we started out by talking about consciousness and, you know, since really it's all about consciousness and the raising of consciousness, I wanted to mention this again. It's been a while. We've done some videos totally on the rainbow body phenomenon and you might not know it, but there's been, over 160,000 people documented to achieve the rainbow body. So what is it? Well, here today, gone tomorrow. Sometimes they leave just hair and nails and there's no other trace of a person. Sometimes there's just like maybe a little charring, like as if there was intense heat, an intense mm -hmm. flash and intense heat. And there's like maybe a burn mark on the ground and nothing else. Sometimes the body actually shrivels up and, and they end up being maybe a foot in length and weighing just a couple pounds or even just ounces and the person is gone. And this is something that we see in the Buddhist tradition. And of course, uh, Buddhism, you know, one of the central foundational practices is meditation. Uh, in 1998, a Tibetan Buddhist monk named Chempo Acho was able to achieve a metaphysical ancient phenomenon known as the rainbow body. Though this was the most recent record of a rainbow body occurring, there have been over 160,000 people who have reportedly achieved a rainbow body through the Tibetan practice of uh, Doshchen. And this is, a, I think actually you pronounce it more of an S, like Sogshin, Sogshin is a collection of teachings and meditation practices that have passed down for generations and aim to help one reach enlightenment. Achieving a rainbow body is a result of reaching peak enlightenment and refers to the act of either shrinking the body before death, at the time of death, or completely transforming the body into light. And through this practice, the most advanced form of the rainbow body generally entails the practitioner 
is able to transform their body into light itself and able to remain functional and visible through that light. First recorded person to achieve such an advanced form of the rainbow body was an 8th century Buddhist master. This is uh, an amazing thing, and probably in the West, most people have no clue. And when we talk about ascension and they think we're crazy woo-woo, no, there's a scientific basis to this. The bodies are just vehicles. And consciousness, as we know, can rewrite DNA just through mantras, just through meditation, just through practices like Qigong and yoga, Tai Chi. Again, we could change our DNA through intention. We can raise our vibrations as we have looked, you know, started by looking at the Schumann resonance. The Earth's doing that right now. So again, we have to join the Earth and in that process. And of course, the Dark Ones are doing their best to keep the truth away from people, keep people waiting for things that aren't going to happen, and also keeping people in a mindset where they believe that we are so much less than we really are. Mm -hmm. We have tremendous power right now. And as it even says in the Bible itself, in uh, First Ephesians, if I remember right, I will tell you a secret. We shall not all die, but we shall be changed. And we talked about yesterday's video. If the light of the eye be single, talking about the third eye being illuminated, then the body is full of light, and then ascension can happen. There's a process, and it starts with opening up the chakras, initiating kundalini, building the merkaba, and then we are in that ascended you know, state, and we are able to not just keep going between 3 and 4D, so to speak, go up to 5D, perhaps 6D, perhaps even higher. Mm -hmm. And then we can travel, and then we can understand and see into different dimensions. And, um, you know, intuitively be stronger in looking at our surroundings and understanding what's really going on around us. And so I, I got this link. It's a beginner's guide to... Uh, suction med meditation and hopefully you know you guys if you're interested you'll check it out there are many different paths again there's many many different paths so it's a matter of finding one that you're comfortable with and you know you don't have to meditate in a certain way some people's minds can go basically blank pretty easily and they can start to sense and feel that they're way more than the body without too much work, especially in these times. We're, we're blessed to be in these times because we can achieve things now so much faster than we could have in, in eras past. Uh, other people might do better with repeating one particular phrase, like a mantra or some sort of positive affirmation. Everyone's different. There's many different techniques, tons of different types of yogas out there and meditation meditative practice but the thing is consistency and dedication and mm -hmm. we were just talking to one of our good brothers brandon there and you know we were talking about this and and how he's doing so well developing this meditative practice that his life is changing so dramatically and so in his mind too it's almost like he's saying if I could do this, God, why doesn't everybody do this? Why don't people wake up and realize, you know? But unfortunately, so much of it's the conditioning, the societal conditioning. So when we go back and we see that, you know, 160,000 people that achieved a rainbow body, and we did share with you guys what would be deemed blasphemous and sacrilegious uh, by the official churches, that Yeshua ascended, but he didn't die to ascend. And think about how the whole message would be changed if it wasn't of a died and resurrected Christ. And we do know, you know, that we, we see that story with Osiris, you know, again. There's been so many of these dying and resurrection saviors, quote unquote, and relating it to the cycles of the sun, the procession of the equinox and all that. But how about the ability of a human to ascend and transcend any sort of 3D limitations through practice? That's something totally different, but that's actually what we get was the prime teachings 
of the anointed one. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely true. That's one of the one of the things that they want to keep secret is Christ ascended and he came to teach that specific thing. And now it's been totally hijacked and taken over and turned into something else. But I mean, if we had those teachings and we were taught from small children what we can achieve, imagine how different the world would be. Yes. And we've seen yogis do amazing things with uh, ability to not only read, read minds and things along those lines, uh, to actually be in two places at once, uh, to actually levitate. You know, there, there is tremendous potential that we have. But of course, you know, that can't be common knowledge. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the situation in the world that we have now. Mm -hmm. We would definitely ascend above it. So as always, guys, thanks for being part of the family. Thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. If you need to make an appointment, it's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com or eearts at protonmail. Please do make sure you guys are subscribed to both channels and check out evolutionaryenergyarts.com. God bless and namaste. Namaste.